Last week, I was working on my 70-year-old car and found this. A spark plug tire pump? What the heck is that? Well, it turns out there are a ton of vintage car products just like this. So I bought a bunch of them, and today, we're gonna test them. I really hope this thing doesn't pop, Kaden. Oh, 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 we got pressure. Oh, completely missed. Are these vintage products trash or treasure? Let's find out. Yeah! Is there anything better than a good, clean wipe? I don't think so. And once you start wiping with today's amazing sponsor, Trico, there's no going back. Trico has been at the forefront of the wiper blade industry since 1917, and with innovations like the Trico silicone ceramic blades that we have here, Trico remains the future. They've got an exclusive silicone ceramic compound that offers all-weather, long-term protection against ozone, UV rays, and extreme weather. But don't just take my word for it. Hey, Nolan, do you wipe? I sure do, James. Whether it's really solid or just straight up wet, Trico's proprietary silicone compound helps repel water and ice even in the toughest conditions, giving you a clean, visible wipe. Nice. And that's paired with Trico's ceramic coating, which extends the wiper's reliability and resistance, giving you three times the lifespan. Speaking of three times, Hey, Justin, tell them about your wiping. Oh, I used to have to do it too much. I'd have to wipe and wipe and wipe with generic blades. But now that I use Trico, their aerodynamic airfoil delivers maximum windshield contact, leaving my wipes completely streak-free. With over 100 years of wiper innovation, there's no wonder everyone loves the good, clean feeling of wiping with Trico. Join the future of wipers and replace your wiper blades today by clicking the link in the description below. All right, Joe, let's get right into it. Our first product here is our Schrader Spark Plug Tire Pump. Wow, yeah, Schrader of so Schrader Valve fame, I assume? Of Schrader Valve fame. What it's, is this? So this is a tire pump. Uh, oh, it, it uses oh, a Schrader Valve, just yeah, like for most, your tire. most tires out there. But what you do uh -huh. is you screw this into your spark plug That's pretty on cool. your engine. The Schrader Spark Plug Pump is a practical portable compressor that provides an unlimited supply of clean, fresh air. All right, so uh, I think this might work. Let's go test it. Let's do it. All right, Nolan, the first thing I think about when talking about this cool tool is that if that plugs into the spark plug hole to fill your tire, it's also got to be pumping fuel into your tire, right? You'd think so, but there's a little rubber piece in here. There's these openings. And during your intake stroke, it's sucking air through these holes right here, these slots. And then on compression, the rubber fits back up against the metal itself, sealing it off, and it uses that pressure to push the air in. Fresh so air, fresh see. air, fresh air from the outside through these slots. None of the fuel air mixture is going through this hose. It's just air coming in through here. Wow. Well, they thought of everything. They sure did. Now Pretty let's smart. Plug it in and see if it works. All right. The swivel fitting at the tip over here doesn't feel a whole lot like it's gonna hold pressure, but I guess we'll see. It has an inline pressure gauge as well that you screw in. I'd only wanted to do like one or two threads, so I'm also a little suspect of that. Let's fire this thing up and find out. Cool. All right, so I think it is leaking in that fitting. You can see it's jumping like crazy. All right, it's been about two or three minutes since we plugged the hose on there and started the engine, and we're not really seeing much of a difference. The needle on the pressure gauge hasn't moved a lot. It is just rattling back and forth, so maybe we let it run for a few more minutes, see where we're at. Oh, 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 we got pressure. Look at that. It's pumping up. It worked. It worked. So once we got that swivel head in the right position, yeah. it wasn't leaking a bunch of air, it filled it right up. That took less than a minute. To yeah, it was very quick, that actually. That was crazy. That was way faster than I thought. All right, Nolan, so lay it on me. Is this ancient crap, or does it take me back? I think this is take me back, baby. Our next product, Job, is the Gale Hall Milometer. This thing claims to measure 31 different engine functions, all from one needle on here. An all uh, one diagnostic gauge. That's huh? right. So you tap it into a vacuum line basically on your engine, mm -hmm. and based off vacuum pressure, it can tell you all those different things. The main draw of this product, though, Job, is the gas mileage readout. I see. So that's why they call it the milometer. Yes. So you get your miles per gallon. Yes. So this you know, is from the days before you had that on your dash. That's huh? right. You know, today's cars they have ECUs reading a bunch of different sensors using complex algorithms to calculate your miles per gallon, where this just used vacuum pressure. I think the idea of this is that you route it to your engine, but then you pull this up somewhere you can see from the driver's seat, so you know kind of what your gas mileage is as you're driving. Job, how do you think this thing's gonna compare to today's mileage algorithms? You know, uh, I'm interested to find out. 
Okay. So it's really like our 33 miles per gallon really is like the zero because you're not on the gas at all. Or yeah. you're not you're not exactly. going anywhere. So right. You're not getting any miles. Right. Well. Working. So you can see when I hit the gas pedal, everything yeah. comes down to tell you that your miles per gallon are coming yeah. down, yeah. which is true. But that is just it reading vacuum. You lose vacuum when you hit the gas pedal, when you load the engine, and that's also when you're using gas. Yes. So it's in the ballpark probably. So that's like immediate right now. So it says 10. Yeah. Right now we're at 15, so it's 13, we're at 14. I mean, it's not an exact thing, but no. I think it gives you an idea. Yeah, it definitely gives you an idea, and it at least, if nothing else, serves as a constant reminder of your efficiency yes. from a time when there was no other way to really know. I yes. think, this takes me back. Take me back. Now, let me take you back to Donut Media. <laughs> Please. All right, Justin, I think this next product is something you might be interested in. It's a swamp cooler for your car. So swamp coolers like this have been around since the 1930s. This one is from the 1950s. I'm not actually exactly sure how it works, so I think we're gonna have to take it apart a little bit. So let's grab a wrench, open this thing up, and see what's going on. It is its own thing. There we go, okay. All right, now we got the basic parts broken down. Here's how it works. You know, you got your air inlet here. Air comes through here as you're speeding down the interstate. Uh, and passes through this guy, which you soak in water. Then the air blowing off of this is evaporating it. It's mm. nice and cool, it's nice and humid. It's a nice box without ice. Yes. So let's put this thing back together and see if it works. I do feel air. Oh wow, that actually does feel pretty good. That does, that's nice. The man. funny part about this AC is in my window and I don't feel it at all. It blows straight to you, Noel. It feels, it feels nice. Let me give you a couple of rotations. So oh buddy. yeah. There you go. We're going 45 miles an hour. And I'm feeling nice. It smells like a cigarette smoker's basement in the 60s. Uh, all right, Nolan, let's try out the real AC. Oh, that's, that's a lot better. That's more, much stronger. Oh, wow, yeah, that's already colder. Yeah. While we're waiting for this ancient thing to choke us out with its cigarette smoke smell, we're going to jump back in the past again with this old school eating tray. It's pretty simple. You just hook it here in the window, which is how I thought this would go. All right, and while we have this food tray and our AC going, we've got a in-car, what is this, an oven? Oh yeah, it's a mobile oven. So, we've got our jump pack here. We're gonna try and cook something while we're in the van. What do we have to cook in here? A or B. I'm going for B. Oh God. Is that a fish? That's a full fish. Oh God, sorry. Oh, oh no. Uh, there we go. Come here, come here fish. Oh God, this is gonna start a fire. Yeah, we'll see if it actually heats up. This would be the worst road trip. This is already the worst road trip. Feel hot? No. Not long. Oh, ooh, yeah, it's heating up. Wow, I'm actually starting to smell this. <laughs> there you go, Nolan. All right, Justin, what do you think? Well, you know, I didn't get any of that fresh, cool, wet air that you guys expected from this thing. But uh, what did you think, Nolan? I thought the Swamp Cooler worked pretty well. Uh, much better than expected. The tray did its tray thing. Yeah. And then that oven, uh, I'm actually glad it doesn't work because otherwise that would have been terrible. The heck you got there, Nolan? No, this is just my new Battery Brain Deluxe. No way. Yes, so what this thing does, it claims to plug into your voltage regulator on your vintage automobile six volt system, and every time you start up your car, this thing will charge your battery completely back. Isn't that the point of the alternator or generator in the yes. first place? Yes, it is, Job. That's why I'm confused. So why do you need it? Aha, uh -huh. the reason a battery does not last indefinitely is that the regulator does not compensate for the normal aging of a battery. So, so this... they're just saying like, if you've got an old battery and you want it to last longer, maybe hook this thing up and it will ask for more voltage out of your voltage mm. regulator. And uh, unfortunately, we, we don't really have any six volt systems. We could cut these welds, mm -hmm. open this thing up, mm -hmm. And I bet that these wires right here just power that bulb right there. Let's cut her open. And... Okay, oh. it's a light with a resistor. Okay. And that's it. So it is what we thought it was. All right, Joe, but why would you even need it? Well, older batteries from cars of this era were much more susceptible to breaking down. And when a battery starts breaking down, if the voltage isn't increased, it'll just continue to break down further and further. But still, even a little hokey for that, I'd say. All right, Justin, our next product are these Richlight Warno Curb Fender Guards. 
But the idea is that you attach these to the fenders of the car on the passenger side. So when you go to parallel park or something, you can feel the curb before you run into it with your fancy white wall tires. You want to keep those clean. I've got a little test lined up for you, Justin. So let's go back to the office and test these things out. All right, Nolan. What test do you have for me? All right, well, we're going to install these on the car and you're going to parallel park blindfolded. Oh! oh yeah, dude. Okay, keep it going, keep it going. All right, crank the other way. All right. Oh! And our curb feeler completely missed. <laughs> put a fist under there. <laughs> these were not designed to be put on a car of this age and country of origin. Cars that these were designed for had a much like different flange on the fender and stuff and not a bunch of plastic. So uh, this is neither trash nor treasure. It's Simply a relic of the past. A relic of the past. Well said, Justin. All right, let's do our next product. What's up, Nolan? This car's so big, you can just hang out on yeah, it. Yeah, you can, you can. Okay, so our next product is actually a safety product, a rain safety product. This is the Anco Telltale Wiper Arm Pressure Indicator. Now, the thinking is, back in the day, the wipers were pretty light on these cars, and once cars started getting faster and faster because of engine technology, at speed on the interstate, uh, your wipers would have a tendency to flap around creating annoyance, but also be pretty unsafe in rainy weather. So yeah, let's open this thing up. Nice vintage packaging. This attached card job enrolls us as an official testing station of this bureau, the Highway Visibility Bureau. Dude, these guys were like, they made up Take their serious. own bureau to sell their product. But man, look how cool that look thing is. Look at this is. thing. It's a it looks very, like an old like, guitar pedal yeah, or something. Yeah, the thing is, every inch uh, wiper, you get an ounce of pressure, and that's enough to kind of hold your wiper down at speed. So let's go ahead and test. It's measuring at six ounces of pressure. So half that recommended by Anco and their uh, gauge there. So this is kind of a cool idea, I suppose. I mean, I'm not sure how necessary it is. I don't think the product is ancient crap, but yeah. the grift is ancient crap. That's right. It should stay where it belongs back in the past. Yeah. All right, Justin, let's jump right into it. This is a tire regroover. This was very popular back in the day. You'd use it to cut grooves in old tires, refresh them, maybe keep your old tires lasting longer. You don't really see this used today because one, it's pretty dangerous to regroove old tires. And two, it's probably just cheaper to buy a cheap tire than pay someone to do the work for you. You do see it used in the off-roading world. I've seen people on like monster truck teams cutting grooves in their tires. We have it plugged in right now and the tip is already very hot. We have an old tire here. Uh, Justin, how well do you think this is gonna work? I feel like in these straight channels, we might be good. Yeah. Will it be usable? Will we pop it? That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. I'm thinking it might just explode in your face. So. Oh, lovely. Let's get some protective glasses on. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, it really does just cut through. It's super easy. Just lay that tip in the groove there, get to the wear bar, and then... And that's it. Try one of these. Oh, sure. Let's get artistic with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I oh, cut through. No, oh no, I messed up the turn. Isn't it like, it's pretty satisfying though. Yeah, I'll it say. glides like, really well. This yeah. might be my favorite one that we've tested so far. I would have to say so. It... I'll back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this thing doesn't pop, Kaden. Okay, All right, Justin, I think we've demonstrated that the tool works, but it does take it takes a, an artisan's hand. Yeah, artisan's for sure. Touch. You need to know what you're doing with this thing. I would not want my car to have anything like this on it. Um, no. All right, Justin, what do you think? Is this ancient crap or does it take you back? Well, uh, it most certainly does not take me back. It is ancient crap. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's super interesting to check out these old tools. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos like this one. Thank you very much. See you next time. Peace.